Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in again. This is Mrs. Kirk and I'm gonna go through with you the eighth lesson in my polar unit. Today I'm gonna to talk about something called De Moivre's Theorem, or you can also refer to it as the power rule. Uh, so if you remember yesterday in, in 14.7 notes, uh, I introduced to you the quotient and product rules. I went ahead and added that to the back of my little note card that I was using. My note card got full, so I went on to the back and I wrote down the two rules that we learned yesterday. So hopefully you took time to add that to your note card as well. All right, so again, with any video, if you feel like I'm moving too quickly, please take some time to pause the video and get yourselves caught up. So first of all, to start, I've got my title here, 14.8. Please take a moment and add that to your table of contents. All right, so what is the quotient, or what is the power rule exactly? Well, the power rule literally has a power in it, and it looks like this. It's r to the nth power, cis n times theta. Okay, again, that looks pretty complex, and I'm gonna give you an example today, and uh, we'll practice using that uh, new formula. So at the end of my video, um, when I'm done, I'm gonna go ahead and add that to my formula card as well. All right, so I've got one example I'm gonna go through with you today. Uh, it says evaluate the following given z is really three cosine 13 pi over 18 plus i sine 13 pi over 18 and w is negative four i. The first thing I want you to do is actually z times w. Wait a second, this is what we learned yesterday. So this is from 14.7 notes. So I wanted to take a moment just to recap because multiplying uh, polar uh, values is pretty challenging and I wanted to practice that with you today before we get into De Moivre's theorem. All right, so let's go back to yesterday's notes here. In order to multiply these together, Let's see, here's my handy note card. The product rule says I need R1 times R2. Wait a second, there's a problem here. Do you see what the problem is? I have an R1 value, because here's my three cis, I'm gonna rewrite this actually. This is the thing, same thing as three cis, 13 pi over 18. So I've got one R value, but over here, I don't have cosine and sine. Now remember, before you use these rules, these need to be in polar form. So the problem that I have is I need to convert this to polar form. So I need to go ahead and do that first. Uh, so I'm gonna put a little star here. I need to convert W to polar form. That's my, my first hurdle that I have to jump over. All right, so let's see if we remember the steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is plot negative four i. So I'm gonna take my ruler here and I'm going to graph where negative four i would be located. Let's see. Well, as a recap here, this is the coordinate really zero minus four i. Right, because it's a plus bi. So zero minus four i would actually be here. So some people do get tricked with that. So just be careful that you are aware that negative four i is actually right here. Okay, so what's the next thing I need to do? Um, well, I'm going to need to use the Pythagorean theorem a squared plus b squared is equal to r squared. So let's see, a is the number zero, b is the number negative four. Zero squared, so it's zero plus 16 is equal to r squared. So 16 is equal to r squared, and then r is equal to four. Oops, I wrote four equals four. So four is equal to r. Okay, so I found out my r value. How do I find out what theta is? Well, I'm using that tan theta is equal to b over a 
So I've got tan theta is equal to negative 4 over 0. Uh, this is undefined, but that doesn't even really matter to me because I'm just looking for what theta is. Theta is the angle from the x-axis all the way to this complex vector. What's the measure of theta? Well, I know it's on the actually actual y-axis. So as you recall from yesterday, theta is on the y-axis. What's that called again? And is a quadrantal. That was that fancy word, quadrantal. Quadrantal is an angle that's on the axes. So what is theta? Well, that's zero. this is 0. This is pi over 2. This is pi. This is 3 pi over 2. So for this question, theta is just 3 pi over 2. And again, I went through that pretty quickly. So if you'd like to pause the video just to make sure you're caught up and understand what I did there, that would be a great idea. So what was the purpose of that? I needed to figure out what W is. W is 4 cis 3 pi over 2. And I know back up here that Z is 3 cis 13 pi over 8. So I'm going to use those now to answer my part A. Okay, so again, this is all recap from yesterday. What is z dot times w? So again, I'm going to write that formula down. I'm going to use my handy note card here. Product rule. You do r1, r2, cis, and then you add the angles, theta1 plus theta2. Okay, so in this question... This is going to be z first. So z is 3 times 4 cis. Theta 1 is my z value, so that's 13 pi over 8 plus 3 pi over 2. Let's see, 3 times 4 is 12 cis. And now I'm going to grab my graphing calculators just to add these fractions together for me. And again, uh, I do encourage you to grab your own graphing calculators and make sure that you can type this in yourselves. So this would be a good time to pause your video and go grab your calculators to make sure that you can do this too. So I typed in 13 eighths plus 3 halves. So I got 25 pi over 8. And then if you remember from yesterday, what was special about this? What do I have to be careful of about this angle? I have to be careful uh, that this angle, oops, I just made a mistake. I just realized I was looking at my answer key. Um, this is supposed to be, and maybe you caught this earlier. This is 13 pi over 18. So this is 13 pi over 18. My mistake, I apologize. So that's an easy fix. I'm just going to arrow up, highlight this, and change that denominator to be 18. I apologize about that. I was going too quickly. All right, so let's see, that's actually 20 over 9. All right, where's my handy whiteout that I love to use here? Let's just change this to be 20 pi over 9. Sorry about that. Okay, so I've got still 20 over 9. That's still too big. That's bigger than 2 pi. So if this is bigger than 2 pi, what was the strategy? You got it. You want to subtract 2 pi to make it smaller. So I'm just going to hit subtract 2, and I got 2 ninths. 2 ninths is definitely between um, 0 pi and 2 pi, so that's looking like a good answer there. 2 pi over 9 is definitely between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, so that was part A, to find the product. And that, again, I just wanted to practice an example from yesterday to make sure that you're really understanding yesterday's concept. It was a really tough concept. And now for part B, I still want to practice yesterday's concept and do Z divided by W. Okay, so I'm going to grab my note card and write down what the quotient rule is actually saying to do. So let's see. It's R1 divided by R2 
cis theta 1 minus theta 2. So I just copy that down from my note sheet. And our, let's see, R1 is Z. See, it says Z over W. So R1 is my 3. R2 is 4. And then I've got cis. R1 is 13 pi over 18 this time. we got to make sure that's an 18. Minus 3 pi over 2. Okay, so again, I'm going to grab my calculator and make sure that I can type in this fraction nicely. Well, what I say about these calculators is I can just arrow up and highlight and push enter and then just change that to a minus in the middle just to save some steps there. So it's negative 7 pi over 9. Okay, now there's another problem with this question here. This answer can't be good, isn't good. This is not between 0 and 2 pi. Now what do I do? The last question, I subtracted 2 pi to make it smaller, but this is already negative. I want to make it to be bigger. Do you have a guess? So I'm going to write down, here I go, this is what I'm going to write down. Because it's negative, you actually want to add 2 pi to make it bigger. That's the strategy. So if you see a negative angle, you want to add 2 pi to make it bigger. So I've got my calculator here. I'm just going to do plus 2. And i got 11 pi over 9. All right, so for my final answer here, I've got 3 fourths. Cis, 11 pi over 9. And I know 11 ninths is between 0 and 2, so that's looking like a good answer. So again, part A and part B, that was just a recap of yesterday. Now let's actually do my part C, which is the last part for today's notes, and actually figure out what is Z to the fourth power. So this is a power right here. This is a power. Therefore, I'm going to use de Moivre's theorem. And I'm just going to write down de Moivre's theorem from the top of my notes. It was r to the nth cis n theta. Just so I have that down. Okay, let's see here. Um, do I know what z is uh, written out? That's really saying 3... What was it? 3 times cosine 13 pi over 8. I'm just going to write 18 plus i sine 13 pi over 18. And they want me to take this whole thing and they want me to raise it to the fourth power. Uh, I'm just writing it like this just so you can see um, how to interpret what z to the fourth means. This is z to the fourth. Now I'm going to try to use de Moivre's theorem here. So it says to take r to the nth. Well, I know r is the number 3, right? r is this number 3. So I've got 3. What do you suppose n is? n is the power. In this case, the power is 4. So it's 3 to the 4th, cis, and then I do n times theta. Okay, so again, this power, this is n, and this number in front, that's your r, and this number here, that's your theta. So let's see, n times theta. So in this case, it's 4 times 13 pi over 18. All right, so now I'm going to use my calculator here. I know what 3 to the 4th is because I know 3 squared is 9, and then 9, to 9, 9 times 9 is 81. I got cis. Let's see, clear out my screen. 4 times alpha y equals 13 over 18. So it's 26 over 9. Uh, 26 over 9. And then again, you just look at your um, answer and decide is this between 0 and 2 pi? Um, I think 18 over 9 is 2, so this is bigger than 2. So what do I do if it's bigger again? This is bigger than 2 pi. 
Therefore, just subtract 2 pi. So on my calculator, I'm going to subtract 2 from this, and I get 8 ninths. So this is really 81 cis 8 pi over 9. And just because these are my notes here, I'm just going to really highlight this part C. This is what I want you to stress for your homework. Now, using yellow highlighter to write something isn't really smart on a video here. You can't really read it. So I'm just going to go over that with my pen as well. Okay, so your homework tonight, you've got two practice questions, and it's questions like this last one. But I did want to take time to practice with you how to multiply like I did in part A. Okay, so that was a recap from what we learned the day before, how to multiply. I also wanted to recap with you today how to divide. That was your part B. And then I wanted to teach you something new today, which was your de Moivre's theorem or power rule. When I, I'm done with this video, I'm going to add that power rule to my note card so I have that ready. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Your homework tonight is going to be out of the textbook. It's just two questions practicing using the de Moivre's theorem. Page 609, numbers 45 and 49, and the answers are on AN-72. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I greatly appreciate it. Again, you are doing an amazing job teaching yourself this polar unit. This is probably one of the hardest units we've done all year. Thank you so much. Um, if you like the video, click on like, and um, we'll see you next time. This is Mrs. Kirk saying take care.